What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. I wanted to put together a tool for you guys uh, that you might, you know, find a little bit useful. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be measuring the duration of how long it takes for a function to complete. So essentially when you are getting better as a developer, you start finding different types of ways that you can, you know, implement a solution. And you might have, you know, two solutions that you're comparing and you're not sure which one is right for the job. So what you might wanna do is you might wanna choose which one is the most efficient, which one takes the least amount of time to execute and what i want to do is to provide you with um you know a tool that can do that so what we're going to do is we're going to write a function and um, we're going to write a function and we're also going to make a, a another object which will allow you to measure the duration of time that it takes for a function to run as well as be able to compare those two durations and kind of get an idea of which solution you might want to use so um you know, this is something I just kind of threw together and um, it seems to work pretty good. So if you want to use this in, in your project just to see, you know, am I doing stuff the most efficient way or, you know, is this other solution, you know, a better way to go, then you might be able to use this in your project. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called duration. And what it's going to do is it's going to take in a block of code. It's going to essentially... Um, Get the start time it's going to execute that block of code and then it's going to get the end time so let's go ahead and start off and create that function all right so as you can see we have our function called duration um, it's and the arguments are block or well you have the parameter name and then the argument name which is block and then it's just taking in a closure so if the closure seems to match then um, or if the function signature seems to match this you can just pass it directly in but if not you can just open them curly braces right on up and put whatever code you want in here now what we want to do is as you can see we're starting before we're running the block of code we're starting we're getting the date we run that block of code. Once it finished executing, then we're going to get the end date, which will be right here. And what we want to do is we want to compare those two dates. So we need to get the time that has elapsed since the start time from the end time. So let's go ahead and get that time interval right now. All right. And since since both of these start and end are dates, we can easily say end dot time interval since, which will give you the elapsed duration, and that will give you how much time has passed since um, these two points. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna return this time interval. So we're gonna have to modify our function signature to return a time interval, which is really just a type alias for double. It's just a nickname for double. And um, we want to be able to capture that inside, inside of some type of variable or constant. So let's go ahead and make those changes right now. All right, perfect. So now what we can do, we can jump right into it. So what we can do is we can um, use our duration on both this function run A and we can use it on run B. I'm gonna show you both of the different ways to actually pass them into this duration function because uh, once again, this uh, run A and run B have the same signature as this closure right here. So we'll actually be able to pass it in. But once again, if that's a little bit too confusing for you, what you can do is you get open them curly braces right on up. So it just depends on however you want to call it. it doesn't really change how, um, it doesn't change the performance or anything. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so this, these are the two different types of ways that you can call this function. Um, we could do duration of, and then whatever function that matches that signature, or you could do duration and then pass in whatever block code. You could even add more code in here. That wouldn't exactly be ideal for what we're doing right here, but um, you could just write the code directly in here if you want to. We could just put this sleep for three seconds in right here in place of the run B, but to keep everything kind of consistent, we're going to do it this way. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and since we have these set in constants, you know, duration A is equal to however long it takes to run A and duration B is equal to however long it takes to run B, we just want to go ahead and print those out to the console. 
All right, and as you can see, um, when we print it out, we can see that A is taking just fraction of a second over one second, right? Um, right here, and then we can see that B is taking just a little bit over three seconds. So the sleep, you know, it takes a while to get back up and running or whatever. But yeah, so it's sleeping for one second right here as expected. And, uh, you know, duration B is sleeping for three seconds right here as expected. And, um, you know, it's very clear right here that, you know, A is better than B. But if we wanted to, uh, you know, take it one step further, what we can do is we can actually create an object that will tell us, you know, how long uh, each of these is taking and you know spit out you know a comparison result between the two durations so that it's even easier for us to read so what we're going to do is we're going to create another we're going to create a object that is actually going to be taking in both of these durations and it's going to give us a little bit more insight on which one is the one that we should choose so what we're going to do is we're going to create a struct and it's going to be called um, duration comparison and it will take in both the duration A and duration B. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, we're going to make it, well, first of all, we're going to make it a uh, custom string convertible so that we can print it out very, very pretty. If you haven't seen that before, you'll see it right now. It's very nice. Um, and then we're also going to add a couple of computed properties just to give us a better reading of what's happening between the two, uh, you know, durations. Alrighty, so as you can see here, what we did is we went through, we made the duration comparison object as a struct, and what it's doing is it's taking in a duration A of type time interval. Once again, it's just a double, duh. <laughs> so, um, and then duration B also a time interval. And then what we have is this computed property called comparison. Now, co uh, comparison is going to go through, it's gonna find out which block is actually faster or slower. So we have, um, we're just checking which number is bigger. So uh, the bigger number is actually going to be the slower number, or it's gonna be the slower block, right? Because if something takes five seconds, that's slower than something that takes one second. So the bigger number is going to be the slower block. So if um, you know duration A is bigger than duration B, then block A is actually the slower block. And then we're just doing the same exact thing for a faster block except the reverse. So what we want is the slower block. So since duration A is bigger than duration B, then we're gonna say that block A or block B will be the, the faster duration. And then if that's not true, we'll do block A. From there, we're just getting the difference. Essentially, we're subtracting the two numbers regardless of which one's bigger or smaller. The magnitude will give us like the absolute value of um, of that. So if it like if this was one and then this, if duration A was one and if duration five or duration B was five, we would end up with a negative four. Magnitude gives us four. And then we're just gonna have a statement in here saying that the faster block is whatever the difference is in seconds faster than the slower block. And then la the last thing that we wanna do is we just wanna make this a custom string convertible, which will allow us to print this very nicely. So we're gonna conform to the, cu the custom string convertible uh, protocol. And uh, from there, what we need to do is we need to implement the description, which will essentially make it so that whenever we print, it's going to print out very nice and sexy. All right, so as you can see, we went and we went ahead, made it conform. Uh, we made the duration comparison conform to the custom string convertible, which once again, it just makes you implement this description so that whenever you print out this object, it prints however you state it right here. So we're using the triple the triple quote string so that we can have you know nice um, spacing uh, when we print it out, and then we're just gonna say you know block A took this long block B took this long, and then the comparison uh, statement right here, which is, you know, whatever is faster than, and you know, however fast it is. So let's go ahead and apply that to our two durations. So we have duration A and duration B right here. And what we could do is we could just go ahead and comment uh, these print statements out. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna um, create um, an instance of our duration comparison. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And we're gonna print it out as well. All right, and look at that. Okay, so as you can see, 
it's printing out very nicely. All we had to do was create an instance of our duration comparison, um, pass in each of the durations, so duration A and then duration B, uh, which we're getting back up here. Remember, we're getting them from our duration function, and we are passing them in to create our duration comparison object. From there, we're able to see easily block A duration, block B duration, and then we can also see that block A is 1.99 so on seconds faster than block B. So I hope this is something that you might find helpful uh, if you're ever just trying to compare two different objects or, or two different processes or option or operations or whatever. This is an easy way to find out, you know, what's going to be faster, um, which one should I choose for my project. So that's going to be all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any recommendations on videos that you want me to cover, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'm going to start jumping back on the comments, start replying to those comments a lot more often. I know I've been slacking on it, guys, but don't give on, don't give up on me just yet. Anyways, that's going to be all for today. So. Go out there and keep coding passionately, baby. Oh, yeah.